watching quick pre-calculus review for calculus part 13. In this part, our main goal is to state and prove a general principle or theorem for describing how exponential functions change. In the last few videos, we've been looking at how exponential functions change symbolically, uh, visually, and numerically, and we've been using Mathematica and a command called manipulate to make that visual really nice for us by making it an animation so we can see connections. Overall, this illustrates the way I like to teach. Initially, what I like to do is I like to use what's called an inductive approach, where I look at particular examples and try to glean from those particular examples general principles, or at least help you do that. Once we got the general principle, we can state it, we can try to understand it with the examples, and then we can use what's called deductive logic to try to prove it. Okay, so that's our main goal at the end of this video. First thing I want to do though is I want to remind you what the command grid does. I used that in the last video. I'm going to use it again in this video. Here's a basic example. I showed this to you in the last video. Grid creates grids. It creates matrices or arrays of letters or numbers or even graphs. And the basic syntax looks like this. And what I've got inside the grid is going to create, first of all, the letters A, B, and C in the first row of the matrix, the letters D, E, and F in the second row of the matrix, and the letters G and H along with hmm, another matrix evidently whose entries are U, V, W, and X in the last row of the overall 3x3 three three matrix. That is indeed what we get. You can see this lower right entry consists of a subgrid or submatrix of the overall 3x3 three three grid. Spend some time thinking about that. Okay, we're going to make use of it now. We'll go down to the animation I showed you in the last video, though I've added a lot to this. It's ultimately an animation that's going to allow me to uh, be more flexible in the, than the previous animations. I'm going to be considering the functions 3 times b to the x. Before, b was 1.2. We always use b was 1.2, but now I'm going to consider lots of different values for b. b is going to be part of my animation. It's going to be an animation parameter, starting at a value of 1.2, possibly go down, going down as low as 0 0.01 and as high as 3. You can see as you look over this, I've used grid. For instance, I've used grid here to include a plot, that's the animation plot, that's going to be sort of on the left side of the overall grid. I've got another subgrid within this that's a lot more code than I showed you in the last video. I've added a, lot, added a lot to this. I've also allowed myself to effectively change the starting value of x, which before I've called a, but now I'm going to call x. Okay, so x is going to be another animation parameter. This was an a before. And I've got a lot of text in here that's going to allow me to visualize what's going on both graphically and now also numerically. But I do need to make one change before I enter this. You'll notice if you look at the F's in various spots, it's not just a plain F, it's an F with, with a subscript, the subscript being the animation parameter B. I haven't done that up here yet, I need to do it. I need to make a subscript and I need to put a B here to emphasize that B is a variable in a sense, although it's not the variable I plot with respect to. It's, a, it's an animation variable or an animation parameter. However, when I'm defining the function, just like I need to put an underscore after the x, I need to also need to put an underscore after this b, though not thereafter. Okay, so that'll do this so that we won't get any errors. And here's the animation. I can change the initial value of x, which again I called a before. I can change delta x, and I can change b, which is now the base of the exponential function three times b to the x. I can change the graph itself, make it steeper, or make it even exponential decay, like this. Okay. One other thing I want to show you is before, I, I was thinking I had to use the text uh, command here, and maybe not with the equal sign. Well, it's okay if you use the text with the equal sign as well. I also experimented with what happens if I don't put the x in quotes here in a text. And basically, it just looks different. Watch it here. Watch this X right there. I'm going to enter this. It's going to change. There. It looks more typewriter-ish, okay? So by putting text in there, it's going to make it look less like it was made by a, a typewriter. It looks a little bit better with this text in here. And also, there, that looks a little bit better. I can even do other things. I can put this within a style. And style doesn't have to be large. It can be italic. Italic there. Watch the X now. It looks even better, actually. Italicized. I'm not going to do that as a standard thing, so I'm going to get rid of that now. Get rid of the italic in style there. Okay. 
What's the general principle? The general principle is that the relative change in y, delta y divided by y, is essentially b to the delta x power minus 1. And that's ultimately going to be the general principle that we prove. I'll go back to putting a 1.2 here, but that's the general principle. You put a b to the delta x power minus 1. Let's illustrate this now with this code. Okay, so think carefully with me. Make sure you follow what's going on. So initially here, b is uh, 1.2, just like before. x here initially is negative 2, just like before. Again, I called it a before. Delta x I changed this time. I made it down to 1 instead of 5. What do we have here? How does it, we illustrate the general principle? The general principle is that the relative change in y, delta y over y, in this case is 0.2, equals b to the delta x power minus 1. That also equals 0.2. Okay, so with this particular example, you've got 20% relative change. The percent change in the function value is 20%, and it doesn't matter what a is. It doesn't matter what the starting value of x is. I can change that. Notice these still these still stay the same. Stay the same at 0.2. It's still a 20% growth over one unit of of x. If x is time, that would be one year. For example, if x is in years. If I change delta x, then of course those quantities do change, but they do stay the same. Relative change delta y over y still does equal b to the delta x power minus 1. It even works if b is between 0 and 1 so that I have exponential decay. So here I have exponential decay, and I can see all these quantities. Let's take a look at it. Let's look at all of these actually. The initial value of x is negative 4.91, that's this value right here. Delta x, the change in x is 2.76, so x is going from negative five, close to negative 5 up to here, which is about negative 2.15. That's x plus delta x. The initial value of y is 12.6, that's the second coordinate of this point. Delta y is negative, the function is going down, this is exponential decay. Delta y is about negative 7, bringing you down to y plus delta y being smaller than y, down at about 5.6. Alright, so all those things are in the picture. The relative change is negative 0.555, about a 55.5% decrease, is the way you want to think of this. Um, delta y, by the way, is not the length of this red line now, it's the negative of the length. So you have to think of that as a negative quantity, if you like. The relative change is about negative uh, 55.5%. That is the amount of decrease in the value of y as a percentage. And it still does equal b to the delta x power minus 1. I would encourage you, if you have Mathematica, to try typing all this code in. I'll let you look at it for a second. You can pause the video if you want, type it all in, and then experiment with it on your own. Let's now get to the proof of the general principle. It's not not a very difficult proof. What's harder to understand is the, the meaning of the principle itself, but we've emphasized the meaning enough that hopefully you've got, got it. It's kind of a long statement. Suppose f is an exponential function, say f of x equals a times b to the x, where a and b are positive. Technically, I'm even allowing b to be 1, though that's usually not thought of when you're thinking about exponential functions. The relative rate of change of y, delta y over y, e ultimately equals b to the delta x power minus 1. This is a very special fact about exponential functions. It doesn't work for other kinds of functions. All right. Another way you can think of it is in terms of proportionality. Uh, delta y ultimately is proportional to y when delta x is fixed, and the constant of proportionality is b to the delta x minus 1. Uh, that's the constant. In fact, if you look back up here, if you multiply this y by, um, by b, excuse me, b to the delta x minus 1 multiplied by negative 0.555, you should get uh, the delta y. 12.6466. Let's go ahead and confirm it with Mathematica here. 12.6466 times negative 0.554591 should be negative 7 approximately. Yes, negative 7.01369. We're getting that quantity right there. That's illustrating the proportionality. All right, let's prove it. We can do this pretty quickly. So I've said I've I'm write proofs in sentences. You should write in sentences with symbols. That's fine. f of x equals a times b to the x. And suppose the value of the independent variable changes from a value of x to x plus delta x. So it changes by delta x. By definition, what is the change in y? It's the new value of the function at the new input minus the old value of the function at the old put input. So what does that mean? That means the rate, the uh, relative change 
in y is this fraction. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this. Let me copy and paste again. I'll replace delta y with this difference. You don't have to do all of this stuff, but just to be extra careful about it. These things are all by definition. Now you plug in the function. The function is a times b to the x. In the first term, I am replacing x with x plus delta x, so I need to change this x up here to an x plus delta x, subtracting f of x, which is this, dividing by f of x, which is this. Now I use algebra, okay? Let's copy and paste this. b to the x plus delta x power is the same as b to the x times b to the x plus delta, b to the delta x power. Okay, that's a basic law of exponents. Now use algebra. You can see a bunch of a times b to the x's everywhere. Factor that out of the numerator. It's in both terms. Oops. Factor that out of the numerator. What happens when you factor it out? You get this. Once you've gotten that, you see that the a times b to the x's can divide out, leaving you with just b to the delta x power minus 1. And that's what we wanted to prove, QED. All right, so the proof is pretty easy. What's harder is understanding the meaning of the general principle. I'll pause the video right here and let you look at it. And that's the end of this video.